The sliding window protocol is a feature of packet-based data transmission protocols. Sliding window protocols are used where reliable in-order delivery of packets is required, such as in the data link layer as well as in the transmission control protocol. Conceptually, each portion of the transmission is assigned a unique consecutive sequence number, and the receiver uses the numbers to place received packets in the correct order, discarding duplicate packets and identifying missing ones. The problem with this is that there is no limit on the size of the sequence number that can be required. By placing limits on the number of packets that can be transmitted or received at any given time, a sliding window protocol allows an unlimited number of packets to be communicated using fixed size sequence numbers. The term window on the transmitter side represents the logical boundary of the total number of packets yet to be acknowledged by the receiver. The receiver informs the transmitter in each acknowledgement packet the current maximum receiver buffer size. The TCP header uses a 16-bit field to report the receive window size to the sender. Therefore, the largest window that can be used is 216 equals 64 kilobytes. In slow start mode, the transmitter starts with low packet count and increases the number of packets in each transmission after receiving acknowledgement packets from receiver. For every app packet received, the window slides by one packet to transmit one new packet. When the window threshold is reached, the transmitter sends one packet for one act packet received. If the window limit is 10 packets then in slow start mode the transmitter may start transmitting one packet followed by two packets, followed by three packets and so on until 10 packets. But after reaching 10 packets, further transmissions are restricted to one packet transmitted for one act packet received. In a simulation this appears as if the window is moving by one packet distance for every ACK packet received. On the receiver side also the window moves one packet for every packet received. The sliding window method ensures that traffic congestion in the network is avoided. The application layer will still be offering data for transmission to TCP without worrying about the network traffic congestion issues as the TCP on sender and receiver side implement sliding windows of packet buffer. The window size may vary dynamically depending on network traffic. For the highest possible throughput, it is important that the transmitter is not forced to stop sending by the sliding window protocol earlier than one round trip delay time. The limit on the amount of data that it can send before stopping to wait for an acknowledgement should be larger than the bandwidth delay product of the communications link. If it is not, the protocol will limit the effective bandwidth of the link. Motivation In any communication protocol based on automatic repeat request for error control, the receiver must acknowledge received packets. If the transmitter does not receive an acknowledgement within a reasonable time, it resends the data. A transmitter that does not hear an acknowledgement cannot know if the receiver actually received the packet. It may be that it was lost or damaged in transmission. If error detection reveals corruption, the packet will be ignored by the receiver and no acknowledgement will be sent. Similarly, the receiver is usually uncertain about whether its acknowledgements are being received. It may be that an acknowledgement was sent, but was lost or corrupted in the transmission medium. In this case, the receiver must acknowledge the retransmission to prevent the data being continually resent, but must otherwise ignore it. Protocol operation The transmitter and receiver each have a current sequence number NT and NR, respectively. They each also have a window size WT and WR. The window sizes may vary, but in simpler implementations they are fixed. The window size must be greater than zero for any progress to be made. As typically implemented, NT is the next packet to be transmitted, that is the sequence number of the first packet not yet transmitted. Likewise, NR is the first packet not yet received. Both numbers are monotonically increasing with time. They only ever increase. The receiver may also keep track of the highest sequence number yet received. The variable NS is one more than the sequence number of the highest sequence number received. For simple receivers that only accept packets in order, this is the same as NR, but can be greater if WR greater than 1. Note the distinction, all packets below NR have been received, no packets above NS have been received, and between NR and NS, 
some packets have been received. When the receiver receives a packet, it updates its variables appropriately and transmits an acknowledgement with the new NR. The transmitter keeps track of the highest acknowledgement it has received NAR. The transmitter knows that all packets up to, but not including NAR have been received, but is uncertain about packets between NAR and NS. That is NAR a per mil currency N or a per mil currency NS. The sequence numbers always obey the rule that NAR a per mil currency N or a per mil currency NS a per mil currency NT a per mil currency NAR plus WT. That is, NAR a per mil currency NR, the highest acknowledgement received by the transmitter cannot be higher than the highest NR acknowledged by the receiver, N or a per mil currency NS. The span of fully received packets cannot extend beyond the end of the partially received packets, NS a per mil currency NT, the highest packet received cannot be higher than the highest packet sent, NT a per mil currency NAR plus WT, the highest packet sent is limited by the highest acknowledgement received and the transmit window size. Equals transmitter operation equals, whenever the transmitter has data to send, it may transmit up to WT packets ahead of the latest acknowledgement NAR. That is, it may transmit packet number NT as long as NTNR, the packet is stored until all preceding packets have been received. If ZAP per million NS, the latter is updated to NS equals X plus 1. If the packet's number is not within the receive window, the receiver discards it and does not modify NR or NS. Whether the packet was accepted or not, the receiver transmits an acknowledgement containing the current NR. Note that there is no point having the receive window WR larger than the transmit window WT, because there is no need to worry about receiving a packet that will never be transmitted. The useful range is 1 a per mil currency WR a per mil currency WT. Equals sequence number range required equals. So far, the protocol has been described as if sequence numbers are of unlimited size, ever increasing. However, rather than transmitting the full sequence number x in messages, it is possible to transmit only x mod n, for some finite n. For example, the transmitter will only receive acknowledgments in the range NAR to nt, inclusive. Since it guarantees that nt a NAR a per mil currency wt, there are at most WT plus one possible sequence numbers that could arrive at any given time. Thus, the transmitter can unambiguously decode the sequence number as long as N, WT. A stronger constraint is imposed by the receiver. The operation of the protocol depends on the receiver being able to reliably distinguish new packets from retransmissions of old packets. This can be done given knowledge of the transmitter's window size. After receiving a packet numbered X, the receiver knows that X are WT. Thus, packets numbered ZAR WT will never again be retransmitted. The lowest sequence number we will ever receive in future is NSAWT. The receiver also knows that the transmitter's NAR cannot be higher than the highest acknowledgement ever sent, which is NR. So the highest sequence number we could possibly see is NR plus WT a per mil currency NS plus WT. Thus, there are two WT different sequence numbers that the receiver can receive at any one time. It might therefore seem that we must have NA per mil 2 yen WT. However, the actual limit is lower. The additional insight is that the receiver does not need to distinguish between sequence numbers that are too low or that are too high. In either case, the receiver ignores the packet except to retransmit an acknowledgement. Thus, it is only necessary that NA per mil yen WT plus WR. As it is common to have WR1, but a fixed WR equals 1. The receiver refuses to accept any packet but the next one in sequence. If a packet is lost in transit, following packets are ignored until the missing packet is retransmitted, a minimum loss of one round trip time. For this reason, it is inefficient on links that suffer frequent packet loss. Ambiguity example, suppose that we are using a 3-bit sequence number, such as is typical for HDLC. This gives n equals 2 Aries cubed equals 8. Since WR equals 1, we must limit WTA per mil 7 currency. This is because, after transmitting 7 packets, there are 8 possible results, anywhere from 0 to 7 packets could have been received successfully. 
This is eight possibilities, and the transmitter needs enough information in the acknowledgement to distinguish them all. If the transmitter sent eight packets without waiting for acknowledgement, it could find itself in a quandary similar to the stop and wait case, does the acknowledgement mean that all eight packets were received successfully, or none of them? Equals selective repeat equals, the most general case of the sliding window protocol is selective repeat ARQ. This requires a much more capable receiver, which can accept packets with sequence numbers higher than the current NR and store them until the gap is filled in. The advantage, however, is that it is not necessary to discard following correct data for one round trip time before the transmitter can be informed that a retransmission is required. This is therefore preferred for links with low reliability and or a high bandwidth delay product. The window size W need only be larger than the number of consecutive lost packets that can be tolerated. Thus, small values are popular. WR equals 2 is common. Ambiguity example, the extremely popular HDLC protocol uses a 3-bit sequence number, and has optional provision for selective repeat. However, if selective repeat is to be used, the requirement that NT plus N or a permal 8 currency must be maintained. If WR is increased to 2, WT must be decreased to 6. Suppose that RA euro equals 2, but an unmodified transmitter is used with WTA euro equals 7, as is typically used with a go-back N variant of HDLC. Further suppose that the receiver begins with NRA euro equals NSA euro equals 0. Now suppose that the receiver sees the following series of packets, 01234560, because RA euro equals 2, the receiver will accept and store the final packet 0, while requesting a retransmission of packet 7. However, it is also possible that the transmitter failed to receive any acknowledgments and has retransmitted packet 0. In this latter case, the receiver would accept the wrong packet as packet 8. The solution is for the transmitter to limit WTA euro a per mil 6 currency. With this restriction, the receiver knows, after receiving packet 6, that the transmitter's nor euro a per mil 1 yen, and thus the following packet numbered 0 must be packet 8. If all acknowledgements were lost, then the transmitter would have to stop after packet 5. Extensions There are many ways that the protocol can be extended. The above examples assume that packets are never reordered in transmission. They may be lost in transit, but will never appear out of order. The protocol can be extended to support packet reordering, as long as the distance can be bounded. The sequence number modulus n must be expanded by the maximum misordering distance. It is possible to not acknowledge every packet, as long as an acknowledgement is sent eventually if there is a pause. For example, TCP normally acknowledges every second packet. It is common to inform the transmitter immediately if a gap in the packet sequence is detected. HDLC has a special REJ packet for this. The transmit and receive window sizes may be changed during communication, as long as their sum remains within the limit of N normally, they are each assigned maximum values that respect that limit, but the working value at any given time may be less than the maximum. In particular, it is common to reduce the transmit window size to slow down transmission to match the link speed, avoiding saturation or congestion. One common simplification of selective repeat is so-called SREJREJARQ. This operates with WR equals to and buffers packets following a gap, but only allows a single lost packet. While waiting for that packet, WR equals 1 and if a second packet is lost, no more packets are buffered. This gives most of the performance benefit of the full selective repeat protocol, with a simpler implementation. See also, Federal Standard 1037C, Compound TCP, Serial Number Arithmetic. References. Kummer, Douglas E. Internetworking with TCP IP, Volume 1, Principles, Protocols, and Architecture, Prentice Hall, 1995. ISBN 0-13-216987-8, Peterson, Larry L. and Davy, Bruce S. Computer Networks, A Systems Approach, Morgan Kaufman, 2000. 
ISBN 1558605142. Kaiser, Michael 1323. TCP Extensions for High Performance, TCP Windows Scaling and Broken Routers, 2004, Sliding Window Demo.